What's up, therave.com? I'm TJ, and I'm sitting here right now with David Ellison, legendary bassist from Megadeth. He's back in Megadeth for a short absence. How's it going? Doing good. Very good. Thank you. How's this tour been treating you? Excellent. Yeah, we've been out for a while. Um, I came back uh, in February of this year, mm-hmm. and then we commenced into the uh, Rust and Peace tour, um, which was only supposed to be for a month. That and was you're that, still doing it. Yeah, and then once we started it, um, then our fans around the world, I think, would have cried foul if we didn't continue to play it everywhere. So right after that month here uh, across uh, U.S. and Canada, then we went down to Central and South America, did all the Latin American countries, played that album there uh, for a month, and then we went over to Europe for a couple of months, and now here we are coming mm-hmm. back through uh, for a second time. Actually, our second time was Slayer. This first yeah. time was Slayer, yeah. Anthrax, and Megadeth, which is our... Clash of the Titans lineup mm-hmm. from years ago. For those who would cry foul that you guys didn't play Rust in Peace, you guys do have a DVD of Rust in Peace Live uh, that came out recently. Correct? Yes, and that's actually why we filmed it, because the first couple of dates when we played the the, the show, Sean Drover, uh, Megadeth's drummer, Dave Mustaine, and myself, we would sit down and have coffee in the morning, you know, and we'd arrive in the next city and we'd get up and we'd just kind of have our little hang time together, and, and we were talking about it. One of the first things I said is I said, man, I, as far as I know, everybody around the world would just love for us to play this, you know, and Dave was like, really? And Sean's like, yeah, man, I think it'd be good. We should we should film it. In fact, Sean was the one really urging that we try to that we try to film this thing because, you know, it, we, weren't, we were a little on the fence. So we said, look, either way, we should film this and get this on DVD because, mm-hmm. you know, at some point we may not be playing it. And, um, you know, so uh, that was the, the whole impetus to get the thing filmed, which you did the last night of that uh, North American tour at the Hollywood Palladium. So now at least we have it yeah. captured. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, either way, we really only have one year to play 20th anniversary of Rest yeah. in Peace. So, now's the time. Yeah, so now's the time. Uh, is that a... Of all the records that you guys have that you're going to play live, I got to imagine Rust in Peace is one of the more challenging ones because uh, Holy Wars, um, Hangar 18, and Poison are not exactly easy songs you know, to play. None of them are easy. In fact, it's funny. Uh, someone scri- cre- you know, screamed out to me one day at a, at a meet and greet or something and said, dude, well, how come you don't play a bass solo? And I said, man, the whole album's a bass solo. <laughs> yeah. you know? So I don't have to stand out on my own and do it. And, and that's one of the cool things. You know, I think looking back on it, it's funny you mentioned that because I think back over say, So Far, So Good, So What, Peace Sells, and Killing Is My Business. I mean, they're all very intricate albums. Yeah. They're very progressive. Um, and um, I think Rust in Peace was the culmination of all of, it was like the best of the best of the first period of Megadeth's career. Because I, and then after that, you know, we went into Countdown to Extinction, Euthanasia, Cryptic Writings, and Risk, which is kind of a more melodic, um, song-based era of Megadeth. And... Um, you know, then I think the last few albums have kind of turned that around again to there's kind of a nice hybrid of, you know, even like the more recent Endgame record um, is probably more similar, say, to like Countdown to Extinction, which has mm-hmm. some thrash. It has some real heaviness. There's a lighter song on it. Yeah. But, you know, what I mean, it's all Megadeth, but it's sort of a culmination of all of it. And, and so I think Rust in Peace was really, you know, that was the exclamation point at the end of that you know, first first four year, you know, or four album uh, period of, of Megadeth's career. Okay. And uh, speaking of the Rust in Peace DVD, you guys also, in a little while, have another DVD coming out of the Big Four live show. Right. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, there's going to be some uh, extra footage on there, correct? Man, that is a huge thing. I mean, uh, as far as I understand, if there's like a box set, there's a DVD, there's a Blu-ray, you know, CDs involved in it. I mean, it's really, it's a collection. And as I understand... Uh, I mean, there's so much information coming out about it now because it's all getting set up to release. Yeah. And, and uh, if you go to Megadeth.com or the Big Four Live.com, I think are the two websites that ha- they have. I know Megadeth.com has all the information about the various release dates around the world. But yeah, it was when we did the uh, the handful of shows that we did with um, Metallica, mm-hmm. Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax this last summer over in Europe. Uh, we filmed the Sofia Bulgaria show that initially that night actually aired to about 500 music was there, movie yeah. theaters yeah, all around it. the world. Yeah, probably the only time you'll ever see a mosh pit in a movie theater. And there was you know? one at the theater I was at. It was really <laughs> so cool. I heard it's great. People moshing and headbanging, cheering in a movie theater. Oh, isn't that great? I mean, I, w- I kind of wish I could have been there for that, but yeah. I was in Bulgaria that night. But um, <laughs> you were in it. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then you know to so to the now release that it'll be it's the extended version of the concerts because those concerts that were that was aired in the movie theater were 
were slightly abbreviated. We had to everybody yeah, cut a, cut a few songs out. So the DVD or the you know the big box set that's coming out that will have the entire sets of everybody. Um, of the songs, you know, in there, and as well as a ton of B-roll backstage footage, the, you know, the, obviously the jam on stage that we that did. That was awesome. Yeah, we that did was incredible. The, uh, Am I Evil with Metallica, <laughs> and uh, which was at their invitation, man, and I just thought, you know, everything just was so cool. It was just such a great vibe, that whole thing, and uh, of course, now the big question is, is, you know, when are you going to do that again? And um, Very soon. Yeah, which we <laughs> hope. We all hope so, you know. I mean, James and Lars came down to, uh, we were in San Francisco about a month ago um, when we went through on the American Carnage tour back in August. And um, actually early September, I guess it was. And they, they, they came down and we hung out. And it's cool. You know, there's just a whole different vibe around all of it now, you know. Um, it, it doesn't seem competitive because I think we've all, made our mark we've all you know staked our our claim in the thrash metal dirt now and 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 we've all got something very unique and original that we do mm -hmm. you know it's four bands that that at one point i guess we were probably competing with each other to try to get up to the top but now we've all been to the top you know so we don't have to struggle for that anymore now we can hang out break bread on this tour, I guess, drink Jägermeister, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and everybody can just kind of be chilled and have a good time and, and, and really just take it all in as a big, fun event now. And uh, with this, the package, you know, it's the three of you, uh, minus Metallica, and then also the Big Four package. Were you aware that when you first heard that this was coming together, were you aware of what the fan reaction was going to be? I assumed the fan reaction would be big you know was it bigger than you expected it though? was pretty big yeah it was i mean it was phenomenally big quite honestly you know and i think especially the, especially the big four stuff that that was in the movie theaters because i mean that's that's a whole nother level of, of commitment for a fan to pay sure money to go sit and you know not be there yeah exactly but i loved it i thought it was awesome sit there what, what was it, like four hours or something yeah four, right? hours. four hours i didn't hours? get up yeah. and go to the bathroom yeah. didn't get up and go to the snack it was it was you guys <laughs> it's, it's like because there were no breaks Wars, they didn't plus give us an break. extra hour or yeah. something right you know it's yeah. like some big feature film like that but uh no it's it's uh, you know it, there's just there's so many things about it that it isn't like well we'll just play a concert it's like we played a f few concerts we captured it we aired it in the theaters we saved a bunch of extra stuff for the box set so it's really i think you know the thing that that this genre has been so good about all the bands and all of it is that it's 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 very fan driven because we ourselves are fans you mm -hmm. know and in the early days to get on stage it was just jeans and t-shirts i mean we were basically the same as the fans in the audience it's just that we were the ones writing the songs yeah, you, you know you play it really well yeah exactly and that, and that was it and i think that's the the communication you know and 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 you know, you know, we, you know, got into the mainstream at one point. Metallica first certainly did, and I think that's a time when fans kind of start to get a little like worried, like, oh my gosh, I don't want my favorite to band to get too big because then they're not my favorite little band anymore, mm -hmm. you know. And I think at this point in time now, as things have turned around for all of us, is 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 even though we've gone through all these different cycles in our in our careers and our history of our bands, we are now kind of back to maybe the favorite time you know clash of the titans is 1990 91 mm -hmm. era you know and i think for all of us to pull together now with metallica it just goes to show man that it's like we are really united very very strongly as a as a team you know and as, mm -hmm. as the thrash genre has survived all these years and that's and something to talk about it's huge mm -hmm. Uh, all right. Is there any chance that uh, do you have an ETA on when we might see some new Megadeth with you back uh, in the band? Well, we're we're working on new stuff now. Um, we've been just cataloging, writing stuff. Dave and I are, you know, going over some lyrics now, and we're just get we're just getting into it now. Yeah. You know? And it's cool because now you know we're we're so we see the end of our tour in sight. You know, so it, that's a good inspiration to know like okay, here's some little windows of open time. And our schedule coming up when we can really start to get serious about putting, you know, putting the new record together. So we're, we're it's definitely in motion. We're not, we haven't been in the studio to actually record anything. I mean, obviously the new track, Sudden Death, that's on yeah. Guitar the Hero new, 6. Yeah, that that, uh, that is funny. I came, out, I, I came out to go jam with, with, uh, with the band on February 5th, I think it was. It was a Friday. And then that next day on Saturday, that track was sitting in the, you know, on the, on the Pro Tools. And Dave said, look, man, I really you coming back i'd love for you to play on this track it would be just a great way to you know have you back in the fold again so i played on that and then 
A um, couple days later, we made the announcement, and you know now it's all moved forward. So it's mm-hmm. great to have a new track that was just ripping and shredding and tons of great playing. Of course, being a Guitar Hero, yeah. it's what you'd expect, you mm-hmm. know. So it's nice that we have one new song already with me on it, just to you know show the solidarity. And and now you know as we move forward, um, the creative process it's fun. It's it's definitely different than it was di- different in a good way. That it's 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 productive. There's a lot of fun around it. So yeah. I just hope that that you know, continues forward, and I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. So yeah. looking forward to turning the page into the new year and getting on with some new music. Is it nice to be able to back and be back in Megadeth and record and write music cause you, you, after your time off? Sure, yeah, it, it is, because in my time away, I did a lot of other things, and it was good. You know, things that I never... You know, it's interesting. When you get in a band like Megadeth, it, you know, it's very united and, and, and outside of a solo album, which really none of us did. I mean, Dave did the MD-45 record, but none of us ever really did solo records. Marty Friedman years ago did solo records because when he came into the band, he already had a solo yeah. uh, contract and a solo mm-hmm. career kind of in place, so he had to honor some commitments with that. But other than that, none of us have ever really done that. So my time away, I really took that as a time to really you know get a lot of those things out of me and and to work with a lot of different people which was which was a lot of fun to do and now coming back this year to really be you know focused on on a new megadeth record it's nice to know there's a certain style there's a certain you know it's it's a very focused sound you know and and i and i think more than ever me and dave especially are very you know we know when we write something go yeah that is definitely going to work on a megadeth record or we write something and go you know what that's really good that's it, not going to work on Megadeth. You know, there's a lot of that stuff, you know, that comes up. Chris has written some stuff like that. I've written some stuff like that. It's like, it's really good, but it's eh, it's not right for, for Megadeth, you know. And that's and I think sometimes it just to be that discerning to know that um, it's either going to be the right piece of music yeah. or, or it isn't. And I think that's kind of... You know, that's what our fans, I think, rely on us. Like, you know, just make it, just make it sound like Megadeth at all mm-hmm. costs. You know. Right. Uh, well, thanks a lot for hanging out with us. I'm Welcome. really looking forward to tonight. Uh, good luck on the rest of this tour, and I uh, can't wait to hear that new album with you on it. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot for watching, and Megadeth rules.